Hello, we are Susan and Brian Keyes. We have been working in the nursery at PCPC for over 20 years. I am the elder representative and both of us have had a hand in the development of the curriculum for our children two years and under. For those parents who aren't familiar with our nursery at PCPC, we aren't just childcare on Sunday mornings, but we actually have a nursery curriculum designed for our youngest group of early walkers through two-year-olds. Everybody come, let's sit at the table, sit at the table, sit at the table. Everybody come, let's sit at the table. We'll listen to some words from the Bible. Okay, you want to hold up the first one? Teach me, teach me, teach me your way, O oh Lord. Teach me, teach me, teach me your way, O oh Lord. Teach me, teach me, teach me your way, O oh Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Psalm 86, 11. Psalm 86, 11. Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord. Today is the day we all come to church. Today is the day we all come to church. It is Sunday morning. It is Sunday morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we go around the table giving each child a little white plastic church. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those with me today, but it looks something like this being white. And we talk about each child coming to church. We ask questions like, can you find the door on your church? And eventually, they will learn what a door is. They will point to that. I need number two. And we talk about what a door is. Jesus says, I am like a door. Jesus is like a door. Do you see any doors in the room? You can put that down. Do you see any doors in the room? We usually have two or three that they can locate. What do doors do? They open and close. They open and close. Jesus says, I am like a door. You come through me to learn about God. Okay. You know what else our Bible words teach us? Listen. Ah, there are verses, that first one, in the Bible that say, knock and it will be opened unto you. And there's another one that says, Jesus stands outside waiting for you to open the door so he can come in and be with you. And so we look at our church once again, and we notice that churches have doors. But what is that pointy thing on some churches? Our churches have pointy things. What is that pointy thing? And they learn to say what, Mr. Keyes? Steeple. Steeple. Can you say steeple? Point to your steeple on your church. Well, boys and girls, what do the steeples point to? Why do churches have steeples? They point to God's great big king chair up in heaven. Isn't that good of God to do that for us? Well, boys and girls, I would like very much for you to tell me what is this? And we go around the table. Each child gets to pat the big Bible and look at the Bible and all of the things that are in the Bible. Let's see what that one says, Mr. Keys. You want to hold that up? 
What does Psalm 119 tell us? It tells us that God's Word tells us everything we need to know to live our lives. It's a light and it's a lamp. And so, as you can put it down, as the children look at the Bible and see open a big, a big person's Bible very carefully, we talk about what else do we know about the Bible. Mm -mm, that one's not supposed to be there. We're supposed to have number six. What happened to it? Technical error somewhere. Here we go. What do we know? Well, God's words are not like storybook words. God's words are absolutely true. And they can clap, they can pound the table, they can do whatever they want. Absolutely true. Say it with me. Absolutely, absolutely true. true. Everything, Everything in, in the, the Bible, Bible is absolutely, absolutely true. true. And at this point, we pass out Bibles to every child. And the Bibles tell us the Bible is God's Word. It tells us of His love. It tells us how to work and play. The Bible is God's Word. This is the Bible, God's holy Word. It tells us God made us, tells us God loves us, this is the Bible, God's holy word. I will be careful when I turn the pages. This is the Bible, God's holy word. Okay, hold up that one. And you know what? We learn a very special verse here, boys and girls. It's right, let's see, where, oh, it's down here. In my Bible, John 3, verse 16. Now say this with me. For, For God, God so loved, loved, what did God love? The, the world, world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish. Eternal life. Yay. Yay! Thank you, God. And we encourage each child to say the verse with us, to learn the verse, and to say John 3, 16. Oh, boys and girls, as we take up our uh, Bibles, we want to say our catechism for the day. We are learning verses... The first one is, who made you? God made me. Did you hear that? Let's say that again. Who made you? God made me. Well, uh, God made me. Say that with me. God, God made, made me. me. Let's see what the next one is. What? else did God make? What else did God make? God made all, all things. things. God made all things. Okay, what is the last one? <gasps> Look at this. Why did God make you and all things? For, For his Glory! Yay! Good job! Okay, boys and girls, we've been talking about Jesus in the Bible when he was a baby, but you know what? Jesus grew up. Jesus had lots and lots of friends. And you know what? Sometimes his friends were sad. Can you make a sad face, Mr. Keys? Hmm. hmm. And sometimes they were happy. Can you make a happy face? Mm. Yay. Yay. <gasps> sometimes his friends were scared. <gasps> Do you ever get scared? Well, Jesus would tell them, don't be afraid. I am always with you. And you know what else? Sometimes they would get sick like some people today are. They might have a cold, 
I, sure. We always sneeze into our elbows and cough into our elbows. <coughs> or maybe they have a tummy ache. Or maybe they bump their elbow. Oh dear. When they were sick or it hurt themselves, Jesus would come to them and give them peace and comfort. That means just like mommy gives you a hug and puts a band-aid on your boo-boo, it makes you feel better. Jesus would sometimes heal them of their illnesses. Well, his friends were always happy when they were with him. And one day he said, you know what? It is now time for me to let everyone know that I am king. So he went into Jerusalem riding on, can you see, a donkey. And the boys and girls, they grabbed, they grabbed palm branches off trees and waved them in the air. And some people put their coats and blankets down on the ground. And you know what they were saying? They were saying, Hosanna. Can you say that with me? Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And we have a little donkey, which I don't have one here, but as the little donkey would be walking along, we would sing our Hosanna song and wave our palm branches. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh hear the children sing. Hosanna, Hosanna, to Jesus Christ the King. Everybody said, we want Jesus to be our king. He's come to save us. Uh-oh, not everyone. There were some people who were mean people. See that? Can you make a mean face? Mm -hmm. They didn't want Jesus to be their king. They just simply wanted to get rid of him. Look at that. They were mean people. Let's make another mean face. Mm. <laughs> you know what? They took Jesus. It was very sad. They took Jesus and they, they took him away. You know, like we can see in this storybook. And they nailed him to a cross. Let me see if it's in here. I think it's in here. And it was very, very sad. It was a sad day. They, we give out little crosses. Some of them are foam, which we can't use now because sometimes they go in the mouth. And some of them are little wooden crosses. And when we have our cross, we talk about how important the cross is. We don't hold it like this. We don't hold it like that. We hold the long end and we hold it high because Jesus says, the Bible says, the Son of Man, that's Jesus, was high and lifted up. Oh, oh how he loved you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more can he give? Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, Jesus died, and his friends thought he was gone forever. They didn't have just a sad face. They were crying. Do you ever sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> they were very, very sad. But you know what, boys and girls? God had a big surprise. We pass out Easter eggs. When the ladies got to the tomb, they saw an angel. They saw an angel, and they saw that the tomb was opened 
And the angel said to them, let's all do it together. One, two, three. <gasps> He's two. not here. It's empty. Mm. And the angel said, he has risen. risen. Let's all do that again. He He's has risen. risen. Okay, let's put our egg back together and try it again. One, two, three. <gasps> It's empty. He's, He's not, not here. here. That's what the angel said. He, he has, has risen. risen. Yay! It was such a surprise, and they turned from being <laughs> to being yay! So fun. Jesus is with us again. Let's sing our song. Let's practice the risen part. He has risen. risen. Look here. I have a piece of paper that even says it. He has risen. risen. Okay. He is Lord. He is Lord. <laughs> he has risen. Okay, that we missed it. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every tongue shall shout, every knee shall bow. That Jesus Christ is Lord. I think I had it backwards. But you know, boys and girls, that's not the only way. Singing and saying hallelujah and hosanna, that's not the only way we talk to God. You know what? We can pray. That's one of the benefits of being loving Jesus is we can pray. Now, what do we do when we pray? Well, the first thing we do is we put our hands together. We do this so we don't do anything else but talk to God. And sometimes, obviously not all the time, not when you're walking, you walk into a wall, but sometimes we close our eyes so we can only think about God. And sometimes, like we do in church, we bow our heads because we serve a holy God. I'll say the prayer words, af uh, and you say the prayer words after me. Dear God, Dear God, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you most of all for sending me Jesus. Thank you most of all for sending me Jesus. Who saves me from my sin. Who saves me from my sin. I love you. I love you. And what's the big word we say at the end? Amen. Amen. Very good. Well, who would like a snack? I know I would. And you know what, boys and girls? When someone does something nice for you, what do you say? Thank you. you. Thank you. And when you want something, what do you say? Please. Can you say that, Mr. Keys? Please. Please. Here's how it works. Let me have the, show us the goldfish box. <gasps> Look what we have, goldfish, yay! May I please have some goldfish? Oh, look what I've got. I've got goldfish. What do I say? Thank you, thank you. And you know what I tell the children? <gasps> Find the one with a smiley face. He's a fast swimmer and he's gonna get away. Well. When we clean up our trash and we take it to the trash can, what we say is, yay for Virginia. She's a big helper. And then the children, while they're eating their snack or before they clean the table, we have a special book that we use every Sunday. L-O-V-E, love, that's why. And Mr. Keys, would you please sing it with me? Why does God put the rainbow in the sky? L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Why does God make frogs jump high? L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Why does God give grandmas to hug? Why does God make such fascinating bugs? Bugs? Are there bugs on here? Oh my goodness. And we point them out and name them. But we notice that there are spiders. Spiders aren't our friend. We never know. We don't touch them. 
and we don't touch caterpillars. Really, we can touch ladybugs, if you can see that little ladybug up there somewhere, or we can touch butterflies because they're our friend. Why does God put the twinkle in your eye? That means he gives us life. L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Ah, can't get the pages. Why does God send stars at night? L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Why does God give birds their flight? L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Why does God give the snail a house? Why does God give a tail to a mouse? Why does God make snow so white? L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Now this part is the most important part. What do we say when we see that the tomb is empty? Jesus isn't there. It's empty. empty. He, he has risen. risen. Yay. Yay. Why did God send Jesus to die? L-O-V-E, love, that's why. And on the third day did he rise. Yay. L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Why does Jesus live again? Why does he forgive our sin? Why do I lift praises high? Yay! L-O-V-E, love, that's why. Thank you, and I hope each one of you have a wonderful Easter.